how are we all today? Let's hope you're all fine. So, I think that's enough on board, so let's get this broadcast underway. It's Indy Truck Deary with the truck in our home in his office in Southwell, North Lanarkshire, where it is currently, yeah, sort of, very middly clearing, about 8 degrees. No bad, dry at the moment. That's the weather forecast for Southern and North Lanarkshire. You want to know what the weather's like where you are. Look at your own bloody Monday. Hi, Elizabeth. How's the weather where you are in Gran Canaria this morning? Anyway, let's get this broadcast underway. This is the news review for the 5th to the 1st, 23, from the colony of Scotland. Thursday started with two main themes in the rags. The performance of Scotland's accident and emergency departments over the Christmas week and our Imperial Masters Five Wedges to the English People. Right, on the performance of Scotland's accident emergency over the Christmas week, 2,000 Scots waited 12 hours or more to be seen. Now, I'm going to say this, um, and I know we're doing well, but hey, I hope. Um, the people who waited um, that length of time will have been triaged and would have been put at the end of an ever-changing list because they would wouldn't be in any danger of severe consequences for the weight, okay? Nobody says it's great fun, but if you've got a twisted ankle and we Mrs. McGonfer's got a heart attack and we Mrs. McGonfer's gone first, and as David pointed out yesterday, while well, you're sitting in the waiting room in E&E, &E, ambulances are coming up outside the door with more serious cases being taken in via a different entrance, and it's more important that those with the most threatening illnesses are seen first. Okay. Now, so, to say people have been triaged. Yep, some people are having long waits, but there's a lot of pressure on the NHS. And that's just that. Hammy, you're on the naughty step for Cooper, are you? Hey, make sure it's a big naughty step, there's a few. Right. Now, the right wing press team really go mental on this. I mean, didn't that road the rate in ambulances 12 hours before they get into any any? Here they're inside the building comfortable. Well, not exactly comfortable if they're there with an injury of some sort. But hey, um, at least they're indoors where it's warm. Anyway, the right wing only right, the Daily Field, described Scotland's accident and emergency wards as akin to hospitals and a war zone. Wow. I guess nobody in the Daily Field has ever been in the war zone, huh? Anyway, this is absolute nonsense, of course. Um, and they also claimed that a 92-year-old was left abandoned, or sorry, left, stroke abandoned, is what they were implying, on a trolley for 30 hours, an accident emergency. Now, she may have been on an accident emergency trolley in the a &E department, but there's absolutely no way she was left unseen or untreated. She would have been seen and treated and comfortable while waiting for a bed to become available on a ward. Now, we spoke about this yesterday. Shame that wait was so long, but we've got a crisis in the health and social care sector in Scotland thanks to bloody Brexit. All the Eastern Europeans who were working in our health and social care sector have all went back to Europe, thanks to Brexit. So getting care pass packages out in the community to move people back into the community where it would be better for the recovery and, of course, better for the public first is difficult. And we can lay that square at the feet of the Westminster idiots for having the Brexit referendum in the first place. Now, as to Sunok's five pledges to the people uh, of England, it was up high in the bloody sky. Now, I'll run through them again, although I did them yesterday. One, half inflation. The rate of inflation was, was projected to half in 2023 anyway, according to analysis from the Bank of England and the government's own Office for Budget Responsibility. So, he's claiming credit for something that was not even happening anyway. Easy one, that, eh? Um, grow the economy. Now, all the economic projections from all the economic uh, uh, experts and think tanks project negative growth and a prolonged recession. Their own Office for Budget
budgetary responsibility forecast a decade of economic decline. Every single economist and think tank blames the projected economic decline on Brexit. Yet our English cousins and the politicians refuse to recognise the massive mistake that they have made. We, the peoples of Scotland and Northern Ireland, tried to tell them, but would they listen? Nah, they listen to a bunch of carpet baggers and corrupt disaster capitalists. And what was it? The carpet baggers and the dirt, uh, corrupt and uh, ca- uh, disaster capitalists ordered, uh, offered the people of England for this economic disaster we're looking at. Well, they offered them a land of hope and glory. Sunny up ones. Reminded them of two world wars in the World Cup, for fuck's sake. Wow. And they bought that. Mental. Hey. Yeah. Absolute folly. Three, what else did they soon I offer? Hey, national debt to fall. Mr. Sunak is treating the English people like fools. Uh, as, the, as the economy declines, more and more people will rely on the state to survive. So the state will need to borrow massively just to keep people alive. Now, we've had 12 years of austerity and the national debt went from $800 billion, um, to $2.779 trillion when I looked this morning. That was a couple of hours ago. So it's probably $2.8 trillion by now. Now that is, four, is £44,641 worth of debt on the, on the shoulders of every single man, woman and child on these islands. Or it is £76,782 for every taxpayer at this point in time. Now as the economy is in decline, the tax base will shrink. So massive tax hikes and huge borrowing will be required just to put the brakes on um, a, the spiral of UK debt. So Sunak knows he's talking push, but he's trying to sell it to the English public. Absolutely nuts. Right, four, bring down NH waiting lists. Um, any, uh, England, your NHS has just been done away with. Right? That's you lost the last of the big public service in England. Uh, how are you going to perform? How is Sunak going to perform the miracle of a um, shrinking that NHS waiting list in there? Hey, how is he going to perform that miracle? Outsourcing. You'll be transferred from an NHS waiting list to a private sector waiting list. Um, hey. And that's because the money down there follows the patient. So if the patient's not going to end the NHS, it's being sent to the private sector, then that money is denied the NHS, underfunded the NHS, seen NHS services in decline as private sector um, a, um, health services flourish. So that's how he's going to do it. He's going to transfer the English public from an NHS waiting list to a private sector waiting list, making that NH waiting list go down. <laughs> yeah, sleight of hand. Yeah, you've just had your NHS stolen for under you, England. And everybody, everybody in his dug. But the people in England could see it coming. Absolutely, everybody in their dug could see it coming. So how is he going to get NHS waiting list down in England? Promise number four. He's going to transfer you into a private sector where he was taking you up an NHS waiting list <laughs> and undermining and underfunding your NHS at the same time. Pure genius. You voted for it. You voted. it. Unfortunately, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland are going to have to follow suit because as he takes the funding from your NHS and transfers it to his pals in the private sector, because remember, 76 MPs and Lords of Interest and the private healthcare system did not ruin. Um, a, his pals are going to get rich, and you're going to lose your NHS. <laughs> Five, stop small boats from curating the channel. How's he going to do that? He's going to give more money to the French to patrol their shorelines and stop them from getting the boats in the first place. 
that one's absolutely comical. That one is Davy laughing out loud. So much for Brexit and take back control of our borders. You've just put control of the borders in the hands of the French. Kent's new <coughs> a huge European and French custom union and it's no even longer a county in England. <laughs> And then I've been an extra all, but we'll get a wee bit better of that for them. So much for take back control, you puppets. That's what happens when you <laughs> that's what happens when you buy land of hope and glory, empire, eh, two world cups, it's only two world wars in the world cup, half a bunch of capital and disaster capitalists who are carpet baggers. <laughs> yeah, the term mug would be used here in Scotland. Cond is the correct term. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, so that's Sunak's pie in the sky. I thought I'd run through it again because it was just hilarious. It's Friday, we all need to cheer it up. <coughs> right, moving on. And another Tory U turn is announced by the criminal cabal. Hey, <coughs> and they tell us that they won't uh, be selling off Channel 4 after all. We Nadine Doris must be raging. But hey, why aren't they selling it at a fast at all? Well, it wasn't popular, the idea of transferring it out of public hands. But more likely could they find anybody to invest in it. And the current climate, let's face it, inward investment in the UK has went do, do, flatlined. <laughs> I hope you like the special effects. <laughs> but I am feeling a bit whimsical this Friday. <laughs> right, moving on Thursday. And a grand sharp opens a uh, presents the idea of a new legislation and <coughs> to ensure minimal services in the time of disruption in the public sector through the industrial action. That sounds all very nice, doesn't it? <laughs> <coughs> anyway, Grant proposes a bill and he, he there's a quick natter on it. I thought it was a debate on it yesterday, but I've had a look back now. I've had a look at hands up. There's a natter on it. And a uh, legislation proposed to be put in front of the House next week and properly debated and voted on for the first time the week after that. Now, um, the House of Lords have already come out and said that they'll put her those in the way. Um, so Keir Starmer said he'll look at it and he repeal it, maybe, but we'll get a wee bit more of that when we get here into the report. <coughs> and a uh, Paul Novak, um, the new Head honcho at the Trade Union Congress says it's a rang, unworkable, and illegal. <laughs> <coughs> a couple of minutes after it's announced in the comments, comments and Trade Union Congress and the trade unions are threatening to take them to court for this proposed illegal bill. Talk about uh, undermining human rights, the right to, the right to protest, the right to, <laughs> the right to um, collective bargaining. Man, it's mental doing that one. Anyway, so, uh, so Grant Sharp proposed a new bill which will undermine workers' rights. But hey, the, um, the bill he renounced saw the EU laws um, for the end of 2023 with the senior workers' rights out the window anyway. So eh, the proposed bill um, would propose minimum services um, during public, uh, uh, public sector strikes. Uh, the, the bill will cover, yeah, let's have a look, eh, the bill will cover Scotland, England and Wales, Northern Ireland is not involved. Now it will also cover the departments of health, education, transport, border security and nuclear decommissioning. Can't be argue much for the musical decommission one right now for the rest there. You know, in the legislation to be, as I say, introduced uh, next week. And uh, as I say, the legislation will also allow employers to sue um, strikers. And that's what happens when you outsource your public services. We've seen Virgin Health do that sue the government when they didn't they want a contract. So Little England's outsourced all its public services, so when its public servants go and strike, the companies that are, that are a, um, doing these public services, um, a subcontract and out some of these public services, will sue the actual public service for loss of earnings, mental. 
Hey, but here's an interesting fact for viewers in England. Did you know that when the RMT had gone on strike down there and up here and causing disruption up here, the train, um, a, the the service providers, the franchise holders, they're getting compensated by the government. <laughs> Taxpayers are paying for a public service to be on strike by compensating the train operators. Absolutely mental. Right, as I say, let's move on. Moving on Thursday, an NHS England's on the brink of collapse. And um, says Carol Gorderman. I think she was a, she is a mathematician, but she did that a TV program a years ago, didn't she count them? Anyway, the presenter is on LBC and she asked the present uh, sorry, Carol Gordon is on LBC and she asked a pertinent question that we here in Scotland have been asking for quite a long time now. And she asked the presenter, now when does a uh, government incompetence move to criminal incompetence. I'm not called the criminal cabal for nothing, but it's the first time I've heard the question asked in England. We've been asking that question a lot up here. In fact, we've been saying up here is criminal incompetence and corruption. Both. But hey, to say, Carol Vordham has put it out there into the ether amongst the um, English people now. And I'm glad she did, because we've been asking this question for years now. And maybe England's been listening. That's why we ended up with the Brexit tobacco. The people of England and their arrogant politicians can't believe that they ever get anything wrong, even though the whole of these islands are suffering because of it. It's arrogance and exceptionalism, and it's ugly. Right. So, I'm very pleased that Carol put that question out there. Maybe people in England will start asking that question. Hey, right, moving on to Thursday. Uh, moving on to Thursday's main event, actually. So, Red Tory Comrade Starmer's keynote speech. When did this come about? We had soon act the day before, and we've got Starmer now. Ever get the feeling that the Pravda and the MSM are trying to turn England into a two-party state and an exact copy of America's system? Wow. Anyway, Starmer's in the exact same venue and the exact same spot as soon as it was the day before. When it's pointed out to him by the um, a interview, he, he's in front of the press, money the press said to him, you know, this is the exact same place Sunak did his speech. Starmer says, I, I booked it first. How childish. It didn't get any better for the other one, and I can assure you, I watched the whole thing. Anyway, Starmer is a, um, a he's asked about Brexit, and he sees it want to introduce a, a, a take back control bill and turn the slogan into um, a action. At this point, he's only Two questions in, and Davy's rolling about the flare. Absolutely rolling about the flare. All the economists, all the think tanks are telling Starmer and Sunak that the Brexit's no going to work and it's an absolute disaster. And what's Starmer's answer? We'll steal the Tory um, slogan, take by control, we'll turn that into a bill that does nothing and watch terminal decline continue. I ever get a feeling that somebody's working Starmer to the back and it's probably a disaster capitalist. Right. Then he's asked about uh, spending plans. Right. And Starmer says Labour are no longer the party of big spending and that the big checkbook would not be coming out. And he governed with fiscal responsibility and only bold to the best. Another one that's talking fish and pie in the sky. For the reason I've just spoken about with Sunak. But what he has done is he's, he's unwound all the big pledges he made a, wee, a, 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 a few weeks earlier with his five point bullet and crap for uh, Christmas. And the big one was the energy company, um, a energy supplier who supplied cheap electricity to the people of, of, of the UK. You're going to need big money, big money to take on the big six. And he's not got it. And he's just said he's not willing to spend it. 
So he's also announcing that austerity will continue under Labour. So far, they change. Different coloured tie, same muppet. Right, he was asked about um, renationalising key sectors and industries. Starmer said um, he, he didn't believe that was the correct course and that the public private uh, sector should work together to provide public services. So, no reversal of the uh, outsourcing um, to the private sector. Of the private, of private services, and of course, it's not just private st uh, services; it's state procurement. So, um, basically, what he's saying is the NHS is still uh, under him. The NHS uh, would still be stuffed because he'll steal Sunak's idea of a uh, shrinking the waiting list by moving people for the public uh, NHS waiting list to a private sector waiting list. So, so far, you can put a fact paper between the two of them. Right. Asked about immigration, he said he'd uh, give more money and work with the uh, international partners to catch the traffickers. So, more money to France. I don't know what Sunak said. More money to France to cage people in Europe where they don't want to be and they want to leave and come to the UK. So, basically, prisoning, imprisoning people in Europe. I mean, asylum seekers, right? And hey, I wonder how surprised their international partners were, or ex-international partners were, to hear Sunak say that he'd work with international par partners to catch the, the traffickers. Well, wow, what a marvellous idea. I wonder where he got that idea from. Well, to be honest with you, that's what happened prior to Brexit. But let all England voted to leave. You know, these sort of organisations like that are calling that. So, and uh, the shared intelligence agencies. So, basically, um, because of Brexit, there was 4,800 people a year managing to get into boats or come across in trucks via people traffickers. Thanks to Brexit, it's 40,000 a year, 50,000 a year, 60,000 a year. Stupid as a stupid does. But I wonder how surprised their international partners were, ex international partners were, to hear Starmer say he's worked with international partners. Yeah, I hope they're wanting to work with him. But may not be what Sunak said, so so far you can be a five player between them. There seems to be a transition period for one Tory government and another Tory government here. Now, so, there you go. It's going to cost a fortune to try and stop wee boats that they can't stop. The French will laugh it off and laugh. If there are, they're not going to cage people into Europe. Another Brexit bonus, sir. <coughs> but it was uh, fascinating to watch him, uh, the red type stammer, give a mere Tory prospectus um, to the people of England than the Tories did. It would appear that the, um, the reviewer on yesterday, sorry, no, be rude, uh, sorry I've been rude to the major neighbor, but, but uh, um, I can't remember who made the comment at this point in time. We can run the audience in the room. Stick off again. And what that viewer yesterday, the two Davies show said was, you know, it's amazing. He it says, what he was saying was Labour is now um, Tory, and Tory are now UK. I, I, I can see that actually. I really can see that. Mental. So, aye, Starmer's more Tory than Sunak. Maybe Sunak's more UK. More UK. But, Unbelievable. Anyway, moving on Thursday, and the Royal College of Nurses said in stock strike action, um, a, if the criminal cabal stokes hiding behind the fear of you bodies and come to the table. They even said they would accept half of what they were looking for if the government would come to the table. Anyway, the criminal cabal declined the offer, putting pennies before public safety. Anybody surprised with that? They won't even get into the room with the nurses. How's that? How? That's the way you conduct industrial relations. Well, 
Also Thursday in the North Field Trust released a report into the divergence in the medical markets since Brexit. Key finding was Northern Ireland is still in the European Medicals Association and the UK Medical and Healthcare Products Regulation Regulatory Agency as well. It also has its own body, which allows them to allow drugs to be used because of Brexit. But Scotland's got the same body and all because and so there's rules. We, we permit drugs and, and, and deny drugs that uh, other uh, NHSs in the UK do. But the diversity in Northern Ireland is massive. The UK um, a Health and a, uh, Medicines Regulatory Body, um, a MHRA, have approved 597 new drugs for the UK market since 2021. Only eight of those have made it into Northern Ireland. Well, um, and the divergence seems to be that uh, Northern Ireland, their NHS is buying their drugs through the European Medical Association, which is bigger, and they can get them cheaper there. Right? Now, so there you have it. A wee Brexit, an actual Brexit bonus, bonus for Northern Ireland. They can buy their drugs more cheaper through the European Medical Association. Um, so new drugs being approved in the UK, they're not bothering the rest of them and buy them for you elsewhere. I wonder how the DUP feel about that diversion. Anyway, the Northern Ireland, a um, health, a Stormont, the public health, a ministry was asked about it, and he, what they had to say was, um, we're providing the best health we can for the people in Northern Ireland. <laughs> <coughs> so Brexit divergence is there. So it's not just in commerce. Where Northern Ireland has no government advantage and is diverging away to the UK and into the, the larger EU market, it would appear it's applied to healthcare products as well. And Northern Ireland's getting a better deal than the rest of us. Okay, so that's, a, that's an interesting story, that one. Especially with all the health stories that are flying about. And finally, Thursday, it's reported that the criminal cabal are on the hunt for a new comms professional um, who can minimise negative publicity. And when I when I read this one, I fell out laughing because somebody jumped straight to mind. And this guy was commissioned by the state, the UK state, to have a astroturf campaign to make the UK state seem cuddly and nice to the people of Scotland. Hey, just a couple of days before, the 2014 referendum. So if the criminal cabal are looking for a, um, a new comms professional that could a, sort out um, a negative, a, um, a sort out the negative press that they're getting, they can, they can work within their own ranks into the Scotland office and there they will find Lord Malcolm Offal, who was knighted for his services against Scottish independence, and they could hire his company, Akanchi. Akanchi is an advertising agency that Malcolm Offer runs, which uh, specialises in making banana republics and dictatorship regimes look nice and cuddly for the tourist board. <laughs> so if the criminal cabal are looking for a are looking for a, somebody to sort out the negative press again, they only need to look their own ranks to where Malcolm Offer does in the Scotland office. Lord Offer will be able to sort them out by I can see. Because they're used to promoting banana republics <laughs> and dictatorships. So, oh, yeah. well, that's the stories I've got picked out to talk about from Thursday. I hope you found it interesting. I hope you found it informative with negative publicity here <laughs> once. And uh, I just got an end in that of a wee funny story because the Tories actually have an, a specialist who was promoted to the House of Lords in the rank who's got a company that promotes banana republics and dictatorship regimes, Lord Malcolm Offer. So if they want to deal with negative propaganda or negative uh, press, then just hire Lord Offer, Lord Offer to come to the I can't see. Right, let's move on to this morning and what the rags have to say because time is passing on. And I'll get serious if I call for 15 minutes. 
Scotland's paper, Safety Fears Before Birth at Delphire and a Royal Row. And we'll go with the safety fears thing first. It's the courier. And the courier gives it safety concerns raised before fatal hotel fire. Um, and it says, a Perth hotel where three people were killed following a fire was issued safety notices weeks before the blaze the courier report. Both Perth and Kinross Council and the Scottish Fire Rescue the day seven other health safety warnings to the new county hotel in December, the paper says. Oh, well. I suppose the insurance companies are getting out. The Times has Harry Stowe's secret and devastating memoir. Who gives a damn? Hey, the eye has UK monarch facing its first crisis for 30 years. Yeah, get in there. Huh? The Scottish loony rag, and this is well, the loony rag, the Scottish daily feel. It's not actually a Scottish paper of thoughts on the it's common. Now the grunge toting man baby really has thrown his toys out the oil. Um, says Jan Moores. In a world stunned by Prince's litany of excruciating attacks on family, rights of assault uh, by William and bust up with Kate and wicked stepmother Camilla. But after years of hearing him wail about his privacy, millions will grow off sparrows. You're right, millions will grow off sparrows. <laughs> <coughs> the telegraph has. Please don't marry Camilla. So wicked stepmother Harry they didn't want his daddy to marry her. Um, the other one he ragged the Daily Express has reconciled, but you sold your soul, Harry. So he's been criticised for writing the book in the first place. And the Scotsman has Tories must be earn trust of the voters. See Ross. Ah, he's another comedian, Dougie Ross, isn't he? Uh, Scottish Conservative leader to attack. Um, cosy consensus of SMP and Labour. <laughs> hey, hey, Tory and Labour here in Scotland, are they just two cheats of the same arse? They're the one political party, they're the unholy unionist alliance, and Ross is saying it's a, a comfortable um, partnership between SMP and Labour. The man's just as out of touch as Sarwa. The National has immoral Tory law on strikes. Face fears back, uh, back, back, fierce back, back, backlash. UK government revealed it will press ahead with controversial proposals that could see unions sued for striking. Lynch and Black criticised plan. So Mick Lynch and Mary Black have had a go at it. Right? Um, so there you have it. Um, the Daily Rants it has Scott's apprentice star. I had no idea my brother is a killer. I have no any idea what that's about. None. none. And I, you know what? I can't afford it. The Herald has charging point rollout slow as EV car sales outstrip diesel. And Ross Labour are playing for Team Sturgeon. <laughs> and the whole Unionist Alliance turned on each other. That cheers you up on us. That cheers you up on a Friday. Let's see what the stars go for us the day, will we? The Daily Star of Scotland. Royal Rumble! Put your dukes up. <laughs> Shy bloke, shy bloke knocked to floor by brother, contacted mother from beyond the grave, lost his virginity to cougar in the field. <laughs> and apparently he's also claimed to have shot 25 Afghan, 25 uh, Taliban, so there you go. Brilliant stuff. Right, that's what we've got for you today, folks. I hope you found that interesting. I hope you found it informative. The weekend, we won't be back with now we're back with Sunday. For uh, the two Davies at the o'clock. Um, hey, because somebody I really want to bring on, um, but I'll have a talk with them first. Hey, see, if, see, if, see if they're available or see when they're available. We might have to change the time to accommodate this person. Um, so, but we'll see if we can get one. Anyway, David and I will be back on Sunday. I don't know what we're going to talk about yet, but probably some of the stuff we've just, I've just spoke about there. And a wee bit more in depth, you know. So, as I say, that's what I've got for you today. I hope you found it interesting. I hope you found it informative. All right, and remember, support the independent media because this stuff we're getting in the MSM and in the Pravda is absolute nonsense. That's why I do this show. I mean, nonsense. So, 
The members support the independent media, support broadcast in Scotland, support Independence Live, Indie Live Radio, Caledon Media, no, there's a great B show, Truth Radio, um, support the iScope magazine and the national newspaper, and support independent bloggers and bloggers like Leslie Riddock and the Ginger Thug, the Audi Great stuff. And if you've they've got a crowdfunder on the go, you've got a penny or two to spare, throw it in the boat, will you? No. But you know, I don't want your money. You know what the script is. Me, if you're going to sell us on Facebook, give me a minute to a change um, at the public after the end of this broadcast because I've seen a lot of people posting it before the broadcast ends. And when you get into the groups that posted it, it says attachment on un- available, attachment on available. So you go away and give me five minutes to change it to public after the, the broadcast on Facebook, folks. Sorry, that's just the way it is now. Men are restricting me. All right. Now, you guys have a great weekend, but remember, respiratory diseases have gone mental. Professor Jason Lee stuck his head above the parapet to be saying what I've been saying, he's all here. You know, mask up and close public spaces, especially if you're not feeling well, and clean hands and surfaces regularly. That's the last two bits I gave you. Right, show sure about social conscience. Okay, the you guys have a good weekend, and as I say, we'll see you in the Hope on Sunday. And then we'll be back on Monday for our usual review. Oh no, it won't be, it'll be Tuesday. I keep forgetting, I can't do a Monday at the moment. But we'll be back on Tuesday to start the run of next week's programs. Okay, you guys have a crack weekend, look after each other. Bye for now.